You on no duty today. I'm on no duty today. No duty. It's time to get that freezer full. When the hit lifters come out, you can shoot him. But I ain't shooting. I'm shoot. I mean, that's probably gonna happen. But I'm not shooting a buck. I'm don't, shooting a don't, doe. don't shoot Bullwinkle and the old buck kill him. You got no duty today. So but then, you what, do your part. so then my doe duty turns into the, tomorrow. Well, and old, another buck comes out. If it's out. an old buck that needs killing, I'd rather you kill him. But That's what I'm talking about. Do whatever you want to do. It'll be, it'll be another buck. And then another buck. You never will you know, get this, this is This is the third year we're trying to manage the herd. Yeah. Well, well we got a, a hole that duck hunters have been running for 25, 30 years. So 30 years. This is an experimental. We're not. I'm not a deer hunter. He, he's been deer hunting a long time. But he's a bow shooter. Well, I'm older than you. But... I, I'm not. A, I've been deer hunting about what three years now, four years. So we're into deer management. So part of deer management is, is as they say, thin the herd, the doe herd. So yeah, I'm I'm wanting something in the freezer too. Yeah, just don't kill a spike. Oh, I ain't. I'll kill me another. So the only rule, the best to eat. Now our only rule is no young bucks. No yeah. young bucks. So we're gonna try to keep it going. And we got a breeder buck out there. We want him. Uh, to live and, and breed another day. So we're going with the deer management. Let's go. One on one. Kill you, though. Thank y'all ready. Well, we come to understand this evening. We appreciate y'all tuning in. I have got to be very, very, very disciplined because they have been bugs showing up here too. But I'm not shooting a bug because if you shoot a bug, and then you come back tomorrow and you say you're going to shoot a doe. Well, then the same thing happens. So there you go. On and on and on and on. Trying to get you does. We need to get a few does off of here. So we're going to do it. Yesterday, and then I tried to kill a deer. No, one doe, 74 yards. That's a little bit out of my reach for bow hunting. So now I'm going to try these crappies. They lowered at the lake. This is Darbone. They lowered every four years so people can work on their fears and uh, get the moss, you know, unwanted moss out of them around it. And uh, two things is happening. It's congregating the fish because they're dropping the lake and it's fall, so the fall bite is on. So that makes for a dynamite crappie bite. So let's see what we can do with them. Open that there live well. We're gonna fry him.
get out of this channel, Darbone. Good luck. But I want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, we don't take this what we are able to do. I'm out here fishing today. I'll probably go in and build a few duck calls. Uh, got the bow hunt yesterday evening. Uh, we don't take that for granted. I mean, that's one thing. One thing we get asked a lot is, how do y'all stay so humble? It's because we don't forget where we came from or who we belong to. And that brings me to another question. When I go to these events, people ask me, well, how'd you get mixed up with that bunch? Well, that's a good story. I uh, run into this boy, and uh, I knew him from the past, and he asked me to go to church. And I was like, <laughs> I thought he was kidding, because I knew what he was doing, because I was doing it with him, you know, years past. But he said no. And I finally relented. Of course, I knew Phil went to his church, and it was coming on duck season, and I was needing a new duck call. And so I was gonna kill me two birds with one stone because Miss Paula was wanting me to, she was wanting us to straighten up. We'd got our daughter, and she wanted us to straighten up and start going to church. Well, I figured I'd make her happy and get me some brownie points if I went to his church, but I'd really after a duck call. So this guy introduced me to him, Tony Neal. And he said, bring him out there at dinner time. I was like, on the inside, I was, <laughs> yes. You know, I'm going to get me a duck call. And I did, I got me a duck call. I went out there the next day and he gave me a duck call. And then he asked me what I was doing there. He said, Godwin, why are you here? You been messing up? I said, nah. But then he said, you believe in God? I said, well, I guess there's something bigger out there than us, you know. He said, what about sin? You think you've sinned? I said, well, he said, what'd you do Saturday night? I said, yeah, I sinned. He said, well, at least you're honest. I don't know which way to go up here. This boy turns one way and then the other. I had a lot of people out here fishing. And then he explained to me that our God became flesh and came down here 2020 now, years ago, and walked to earth with us. So we would understand that he understands. Well, that kind of got me. He told me that he lived a sinless life and he died on a cross, they killed him. Put him in a tomb and buried him. And three days later, he, he came back to life. Our God's not dead. That's why we can depend on him. And that's just what we do at baptism. It's pretty cool. We're reenacting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Just so like when he was hanging on the cross, he took our sin. Well, that's kind of like us uh, repent. Well, what's repenting, you say? It's just not doing what you're doing now and, and doing something different. Phil asked me, he said, you ever tried to be good? And I kind of thought about it and I said, no, I ain't never tried to just be good. Well, let's repent, just try to be good. Quit what you're doing and do better. That's just like him hanging on the cross. They bury you in a watery grave, just like he was buried, and you come up to a new life. Just like three days later, he resurrected out of that tomb. You're filled with the Holy Spirit, sealed, sunship. You're, you're part of the crew now. And you have a giant family all over this world to help you. If you get sick or something or go through trouble, marriage trouble, you got a 
church family that hugs on you and loves on you, I encourage you to find, if you don't have a good church or not going to church, just, just try it. Just go. Find your church. Everybody's not going to like every church they go to. You're not going to find the perfect church. It's full of sinners. I'm a sinner. I try not to be. But that's what helps you. You're the Holy Spirit. It helps you because it makes your conscience bother you when you do something bad now, real bad. So you got help. So it's not just going to church, as they say. You're meeting with the brothers, the, your family. I wasn't even looking for Christ when I found him, but I knew how to, I knew I loved my wife, but after I was baptized into Christ, my whole attitude changed. I was in love with her then. I can't explain it, it's just different. And I'm sure not wasting money on a bunch of junk, drugs, and crap like that. Doing pretty good. I'm pretty blessed. Got to be on a TV show. They could, Robertsons could have said, no, just us, you know, we're just gonna keep it us. But it's that love you get from being a Christian because God loves us. He shows us love. It's a way better way to, way to live. I'm glad it impacted me. But we thank y'all for watching. We, we surely do. We don't take it for granted that um, we get to do stuff like this because if y'all didn't watch us, we couldn't do it. And we truly thank you. We love you. See you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some comments. We love them comments. See y'all later.